Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you how to convert from a position graph to a velocity graph and also how to convert from a velocity graph back to a position graph. Now in order to convert between these graphs, we have to keep a couple principles in mind. Whenever we convert from position to velocity, we're going to find the slope of the position graph. The slope of the position time graph always tells us the object's velocity. We can use that to convert from one to the other. To go back the other way, in other words, from a velocity graph to a position graph, we can find the area of the velocity graph. The area of the velocity graph in each interval will tell us the displacement during that interval. We can use that displacement information to then convert back to the position graph and see what the position graph is going to look like. All right, let's jump to the whiteboard and get started. So in our first example, we have a velocity time graph and we're going to convert from that velocity time graph to a position time graph that describes the same motion. I'm going to start by reading my velocity graph. I have an object moving in the positive direction pretty quickly and then suddenly it's moving slower in the positive direction, another constant speed here, and then suddenly it's stopped. It's not moving in that last second. So again, we have, we're moving fast in the positive direction, then suddenly we're moving slower in the positive direction, and then finally we're at a stop at the end. I'm gonna create a position time graph that correlates to that. To make sure that I get everything lined up, I always include a dotted line that connects the velocity graph up to the position graph so I can keep everything vertically aligned across the times that I'm looking at. Because I'm converting from velocity up to position, I can use the area of the velocity graph to determine the displacement in each time interval. So to get that area, I'm going to shade from the horizontal axis on the velocity graph up to the velocity line here. And that's always going to be the case. I'm either going to shade up from the horizontal axis or I'm going to shade down from the horizontal axis if I have a negative velocity. Now I'm going to find the area of that rectangle. If I look at this, I've got a height of the rectangle of 2 meters per second, and that's a positive 2 meters per second. The width of it is going to be the time that passes, so 0 to 1, 2, so 2 seconds pass during that time interval. So I'm going to multiply 2 meters per second times 2 seconds. The meters per second times seconds, the seconds will divide out, and I'm left with positive two meters. Two meters per second height times two seconds width, and I get a delta x or a change in position or a displacement of positive four meters. Now I'm gonna go up to my position graph. I have to pick a starting position. Now, I don't have any information here in the problem that we're doing about the starting position. So I can pick whatever starting position I want. You could do a problem that says that starting position is positive three meters, which in case you should start at positive three meters. But if it doesn't say, we can pick any starting position we want. I'm gonna pick a starting position of zero meters because that's a good place to start usually. So I'm gonna mark a point here at zero comma zero to be my starting position. My displacement was positive four meters. So I'm gonna go from zero up to four, zero plus four is four. And I'm gonna reach that position of four at the end of my time interval, which will be right there. So I'm gonna plot that point. Because I'm moving at a constant velocity during that whole interval, I'm gonna connect those two points with a line. It's not gonna be curved because I don't have a changing velocity during the interval. Now I'm gonna do the same process for the second interval. I'm gonna find the total area of the second interval. Again, I'm gonna shade from the horizontal axis up to the velocity line. The height of my rectangle here looks like it's positive one meter per second. And the time that passes, be careful with this. A lot of students will look at this and say, the time that we multiply by is four seconds, but it's not. The time interval ends at four seconds, but it didn't last for four seconds. The time interval began here at the two second mark. How much time passes from two to four? Well, just two seconds pass during that time interval. So my height was one meter per second, my width here is two seconds. One times two gives me positive two meters as my displacement during that time interval. Now I'm gonna move back up to the position graph. Be careful here because my starting position in this time interval isn't zero. My starting position in this time interval is actually four meters. So I'm gonna start at four meters and I'm gonna add two meters to it because my displacement was two. So four meters, plus two brings me up to six. And so I'm gonna end that time interval at a position of six, so my dot is right there. And again, I'm gonna connect those with a line, a straight line, because I have a constant velocity during that time interval. Again, 
the area that I just found in that rectangle didn't tell me my ending position. I didn't have an ending position of two. It told me how much my position changed from the beginning of that interval, where it was at four, to the end of that interval, where it moved forward two meters to get to a position of six meters. We'll do the same thing with the last interval, but because my velocity is zero, the area here is zero, so I'm gonna have a change in position or a displacement of zero meters in that last interval. So when I come back up to my graph, I've got six meters as my starting position. That's not gonna change, so I'm gonna end at six meters, and I get a horizontal line in that last section. So we converted from a velocity time graph to a position time graph that shows the same motion. And I could describe it in the same way. At the beginning, I'm moving quickly in the forward direction, then here I'm moving slower in the forward direction, and then at the end here, I'm stopped. So whether I read a position or a velocity graph, I should be describing or reading the same motion in both. Let's jump to a second example. I'm gonna move through this one a little bit quicker, but we're gonna deal with some negative velocities, so I do wanna make sure I point out some things with that. Again, I'm gonna divide this up each interval with a dotted line so that I can line up my position and velocity graph. So in my first interval, I have a negative velocity. So I don't wanna have a starting position of zero because of the way I've set up my grid here. If I start at a position of zero and I move in the negative direction, I'm gonna go off of my position graph and that's gonna look a little bit messy. So I'm gonna start my object somewhere else. I picked a position of five meters right here but I could pick any starting position I want to, as long as the problem doesn't define it for me. Again, I'm gonna shade from the horizontal axis up or down to the velocity. In this case, I'm gonna shade down to the velocity line right there. And then I'm gonna multiply the height times the width of my rectangle. The rectangle's height looks like it's negative two meters per second. The negative's important. That tells me that I'm moving in the negative direction. And it looks like one, two seconds will pass during that time interval. So negative two meters per second times two seconds would be negative four meters. That's my displacement during that first time interval. So now I'm gonna go back up to my position graph. I'm starting in a position of positive five. I'm gonna then subtract four from that because I have negative four meters as my displacement. Five minus four or five plus negative four will take me from five, one, two, three, four, down to one. And so I'm gonna end that interval at a position of positive one. And again, I'm gonna connect those with the straight line because I have a constant speed during that interval. I'm gonna do the same thing with the next section. I'm gonna shade it in from my horizontal axis up to the velocity line. I've got a velocity of two meters per second over a time interval of two seconds. Two times two is four. So I have a change in position or a displacement of positive four. I'm starting that interval at a position of positive one. One plus four will bring me up to five. So one plus the four brings me up to five. I end that interval at a position of positive five. I connect those with a straight line because I have a constant velocity. Do the same thing with the last interval here. Looks like I've got a height of four meters per second. That lasts for only one second. Four times one is four. My displacement is positive four. I'm starting this interval at positive five. Five plus four is nine. So I'm gonna end this interval at a position of positive nine. So I have a dot right there, connect those with a straight line. And now I have a position graph that matches my velocity graph. It looks like I'm moving in the negative direction, moving in the negative direction. And then I change directions, move in the positive direction, move in the positive direction. And then I'm gonna suddenly get faster in the positive direction, which we see here with the steeper slope on my position graph. Both graphs describe the same motion one from the perspective of the position, one from the perspective of the velocities. Now we're gonna look at two examples where we're going the opposite way. We're going from a position time graph to a velocity time graph. Now over here in our diagram, remember that when we go from position to velocity, we're gonna look at the slope of the position graph to determine the velocity for each section. So let's connect these graphs with those dotted lines again to separate each section out. We're going to calculate the velocity in each section. So in the first section, I go from a position of 10 down to a position of six. If I go from 10 to six, that's gonna be a change in position of negative four. Over a time interval, it looks like one second passes. So negative four divided by one second, I get a velocity of negative four meters per second. That's the same velocity during that whole time interval. So when I jump down to my velocity graph, I'm gonna graph negative four, but it's gonna be negative four that whole interval. 
So negative four to negative four, I'm gonna connect that with a horizontal line because that velocity is constant during that interval. Now suddenly, my speed changes. I'm starting at a position of six. So to calculate my velocity, I'm gonna go from six. Looks like I'm going down to two. Six to two, that's a change of negative four. But in this case, I change position by four meters in the negative direction, but it, that takes me two seconds to do that. So instead of negative four over one, I'm gonna do negative four over two seconds. Two seconds pass from one second to three, that's a change of two seconds. Negative four over two is gonna be negative two meters per second. So instantly my velocity changes from negative four to negative two meters per second. And so I'm gonna graph that along right here. And of course that's gonna be a horizontal line to connect those. And I always draw a dotted line to show that jump in velocity that happens instantaneously in the way that we're graphing it here, sort of in this idealized version of it. All right, let's look at the last interval, but the same thing, we're starting at a position of two, we're ending at a position of zero, so negative two meters over two seconds that it takes to do that. So I have a velocity of negative one meter per second. And so I'm gonna graph that down here. Suddenly I have a negative one meter per second velocity. And that's gonna be the same during that whole interval, connected with the dotted line there. And now I have a velocity time graph that describes the same motion as my position time graph. One last example here, just to make sure that we got it. I've got another position graph. I'm converting to velocity. Whenever I convert from position to velocity, I'm gonna find the slope of the position graph, which tells me the velocity in each time interval. I'm gonna break this up into the intervals and use a dotted line to connect the position and velocity graphs to make sure everything is lined up. It looks like my velocity in this first section, I go down two meters in one second, so two meters per second. I'm gonna graph that down here in my velocity graph, negative two meters per second. In the second interval, it looks like I've got a position of one, but that position's staying the same. So my velocity is zero meters per second. I'm gonna come down here and graph zero meters per second velocity on this graph. And then in the final section, it looks like I go from one all the way up to nine. So my velocity, I'm gonna take a positive eight meters. If you go from one to nine, that's a change of positive eight. Divided by, it looks like two seconds pass in that time interval. Eight over two gives me positive four meters per second. I'm gonna graph that line down here. I'm gonna draw the dotted line to connect those. So I've got an object moving in the negative direction, velocity in the negative direction. Then the object stops, which I see a velocity of zero right here. And then the object moves pretty quickly in the positive direction, which I see in my velocity graph right there. So that's how you can convert between position time graphs and velocity time graphs in constant velocity motion. Remember, whenever you have a position time graph, you can find the slope of that to find your velocities and plot those on your velocity graph. If you have a velocity time graph, you can find the area under each section. That's gonna tell you the displacement for each section, which you can use to create a position time graph. What's up?